with the spirit of the cow. Just a cow. We, for some weeks, we spent some weeks talking about the spirit of a carbon. I want to call it carbon experiences. And we explain how a carbon experiences came about. So now we enter into the next series dealing with the spirit of e carbon. But before we could actually get into the actual dealing with this spirit, we have to understand what even make the spirit to come. What are the things that allow the spirit of Ichabod to come into our lives? And we say that the spirit of Ichabod comes when the hedge around you is broken. We talked about hedge. What is a hedge? The Bible says in Psalm 125, there are mountains surround Jerusalem, so our God surround us now and forevermore. He said, I will give my angels charge over you to keep you in all thy ways, that you will not dash your feet against a stone. So hedge basically is the divine protection that comes from God. Sometimes we call it shield, a wall, a wall of defense. When you become a child of God, born again, you enter into a hedge. God makes a hedge around your body's own, wherever you go. It could be a form of anger, it could be a form of fire, but the hedge is to keep away demonic influence and demonic arrows. It means, therefore, if you are under the hedge of God, the enemy cannot penetrate. But the spirit of Ichabod will come when the hedge is broken. The Bible says when the hedge is broken, serpents will bite. The book of Prophets. When the hedge is broken, serpents will bite. Meaning, serpents are always been knocking around. The serpent cannot bite because the hedge is around you. Maybe let me repeat that. Serpent is already locking. M-U-R-K-I-N-G. Locking around. Even with the hedge around you. Oh, don't you know that? Now listen to me very carefully. We are coming to that. God has, you know, God was with the sons of God in the book of Jacob chapter 1. Yeah. And what happened? Satan came. Mm -hmm. He also came Sinner. where the sons of God were. Yeah. And we can imagine that the uh, audacity. He's a son of God too. <laughs> he came where the sons of God are. And God asked him, Sinner, what have you been doing? He told that I've been going what? Go and flow. Yeah. Up and down. You know, so you know what, even with a hedge around you, Satan is locking around, yes. waiting for the available opportunity. Yes. Waiting for that available opportunity. Mm -hmm. If you look at the book of uh, the book of Zachariah, remember? When Joshua the high priest mm -hmm. was having a, a communication with the angel of God, Satan came! So you understand that? So he's going around, down and floor, up and down, looking for available opportunity. You know what? Even with the hedge around you, Satan does not run away. And what happens? When that hedge breaks, it bites. So he can't want experience. He can't want spirit comes upon you when the hedge is broken. Last few weeks we talked about what can break your head. We started by saying three things or three ways your head could be broken. One, other people can break your head. How? We said number one, other people could break your head. You yourself can break your head and God 
himself can break your hedge. Somebody will be asking, how can God break a hedge? That's what we're coming with this morning. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You can break your hedge. Somebody can break your hedge. Somebody, something you have no control of. Number one, your foundation. The foundation you are born into. Your foundation. Oh God, thank you. Last week I was, the Lord brought a new revelation to me about this foundation. How come when you are born again, you are translated from the foundation of the enemy to the foundation of God? How can your own foundation still bother you? Last week, the Lord brought that very clear to me. Because somebody asked me that question. Say, Pastor, you talk about foundation. If I say when you are born again, you are translated, then how can my own foundation bother me? All things pass away, no all things are because of you. And as she left my office, the Lord, he was like a, a book open before me. The Lord said, let me teach you what he just asked you. The illustration came. It's like you standing on a rock. You know what? This is where you were before. A clear sun, and God lifts you on the rock. You know what? You are on a different foundation. But where you were standing, smoke is coming out. Deep black smoke. It's coming out and it's engulfing you. Do you see what I'm talking about? You were here. But now you are born again, God lifts you here on a rock. The smoke is coming from where you are standing and engulfing you on the rock you are standing. You see that? Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? Quite all right, we are translated in the better and solid foundation through the blood of Jesus Christ. But because of the smoke coming from where you were standing before, you can't enjoy the freedom that comes from this rock that's standing. That smoke is coming out, engulfing you. You are standing on a rock, rock that can never fail. But the smoke disturbing you, disturbing your vision. You can't even see. With the smoke, you can't see. With the smoke, you are not comfortable. With the smoke, you can't even stand still. The only way to enjoy the rock is to quench the smoke. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. That's what the Bible says. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Mm. But that's not what we're going to do. I don't want to bring that up. What the Lord showed me. God will help us. Amen. So, somebody nice can break your hedge. Your foundation. We study about your foundation. Something you have no control over. And relationship you keep. That's why I say somebody else. Your wife can break your hedge. Your husband can break your hedge. In other words, when you are unequally yoked with unbeliever, the hedge automatically breaks. No matter how righteous you are, if you have a relationship with an unbeliever or somebody with a polluted foundation, your hedge automatically breaks. But I have to say, what relationship has light with darkness? No relationship. They know you not. The person that you have a relationship with, you are the same body with that person. That's why sex outside marriage breaks your head. Even legally, spiritually, the real marriage you marry can break your head. If one of you, or both of you, operate with polluted foundation, as I said something here, I said, marriage can take you up. Marriage can bring you down. Very mm-hmm. don't about it. The fact that you are legally married, you are a child of God, you are born again, doesn't mean that everything is okay. You need to pray. Amen. What do I say? You need to pray. A marriage can bring you down. A woman can bring you down. Why? Because you pray on that polluted foundation. And when they are joined together, the hurt is broken. Darkness and light cannot mix. If you try to mix darkness and light, you have calamities. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we pray to God. Whatever pollution, whatever foundation is already weak, let God repair the foundation yes. and deliver us. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. And finally, uh, today, 
We're going to pick up a topic and see how far we can go. How God can punch up the hedge. I'm going to teach. I'm not going to preach. Because some people are already wondering, how can God break a hedge that we put together? Is that not, is that not an abnormal age? God puts a hedge together and breaks it. Does he break his word? No. Uh -huh. Then how can God break the hedge that he puts together? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So today, this morning we said, one of the ways your hedge can be broken is for God himself to puncture the hedge. How can that be? Look at the book of Job chapter 1. Let's start from there. Job. You have the Bible? Quickly. Look at Job. Job chapter 1, verse 6 to 12. Yes, go ahead, please. Yes. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, When comes thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? A perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and endureth evil. Verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for not? Has not thou made a, a, an age about him, uh -huh. and about his house, and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the vow. Verse 11. They put forth thy hand now and touch all that he has, and he will cause thee to thy face. Mm. Verse 12, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only upon himself put not thy hand, sorry, put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Yes, okay. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We read all the time. Remember, <laughs> it was God himself that directed Satan to Job. I want to understand that point. It wasn't the sins of Job. It wasn't the foundation of Job. It was God himself that told Satan. When he saw Satan go, go and flow, up and down, he told him, wait a minute, have you seen my son Job? Oh, shout out to How many people can God say, what is that is have you seen my my son do it? <laughs> have you seen my son Job? <laughs> Sit down now and say, God, why are you so funny? Why will Job prosper? They are putting hands around him. Everything he touches prosper. I can't even enter. I can't enter. There's a hands around him. I can't penetrate. So why wouldn't Job laugh? I said, okay, okay, is that what you say? So he said, okay, you know what? I will punch on the hedge. Go in. Ah. You know what? God himself punch on the hedge. Why would God punch on the hedge? That's a big question. Job did nothing wrong or sinful before God. In fact, the Bible says Job was the only person before God. And God blessed him and his household with much wealth. Now, how can we say God that hangs around him and all his possession allow Satan to come in and take all the way? Don't you? Your sin not bother him. How could your head be broken by God? God wanted to show Satan that, that no matter what he did, there was somebody that would not forsake him. Yeah. You know what? God had absolute belief, confidence that Job, the 
He's a faithful person. Yeah. Man, there's always a time to test that faithfulness. He tells us, I know what? Go in, I will punch out the head. You know what? Go in, I punch out the head. For a test. He said, test. Tell me something, say, test. Yes. Say, test. Yes. Oh, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the reasons God breaks the heart, God Himself points out the heart, is to test you. Test my faith in Him. Test my trust in Him. Oh, you say, my child of God. It is easy to say, I'm a child of God when things are good. Yes. Oh, don't you get that? That's right. And so when you pay your rent, any day you pay your rent, and, 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 the, and the boss in your church does not trouble you. When you come here, they say, lift up your holy hand. You lift up and shout, Hallelujah. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. But let the day come, you cannot pay your rent. Let the day come, you are fired from your job. You come to church. If they call me, you will come to church. You stand here looking at me with so much anger in your face. I don't believe you, you have a business. I'm sure he's doing well, that's why he's wasting his time. If only you can control what I'm going through. You will know that these things you are saying, they are not true. I, I pray every Friday, nothing is happening. But God told him that this one, this one, I trust him, he will not forsake you. But just to put this to test, let me take up the hedge. Go in. God put to the hedge to test you. All the reasons. But based on trust in him, some of you might be going through a test. Tell somebody it's only a test. Only a test. Oh, I don't hear that. Tell somebody else, say it's only a test. It's only a test. Say it's only a test. It's only a test. This one also shall pass. This one also shall pass. Never throw all this in peace. 
Now that man calls God. The wife told him, Are you crazy? You, you are better dead than what you are today. Cause this a God and die. Is it not enough? Like would I would say, my wife would say, let me kill Jesus. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. They just say, no, no what? I give up the name. Victory came. Amen. But God proved Job. God proved his faithfulness. Maybe you don't know. After trial, after death, stop promotion. Amen. Amen. Let me not stop preaching on that. I said, after test, come promotion. Yeah. Some of you don't say that. Yeah. After test, come promotion. Right. Don't you know? After the test was over, what you had before was nothing compared to what came later. Yeah. Oh, you think that you have something now? You think that you are blessed now? Or you think that you have small money in your pocket? Oh, what is coming upon you? Yes. What God is about to release upon you? The door of God is about to open up to you. The blessing is about to fall upon you. It's hard. Ah, God, 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 God. You don't get it. You don't get it. If only you understand that God is about to open the window of heaven. God is about to pour a blessing upon somebody. The question becomes, will you pass the test? Will you pass the test? The God is going to promote somebody. I said in this, I said, listen, it might take you 15 years or 20 years of suffering. When God wants to restore you, He doesn't go by the number of years that pass through hell. You know what I'm saying? You can take one day. What you left for for 20 years can happen to you in less than one year. The friends that overtook you, the friends that had everything when you had nothing, it might thank God less than a year to make you of a pastor. You don't get that. I have seen it in my life. So don't worry about those that have gone ahead of you. Don't worry about those that have gone far. We like to compare ourselves. Yeah. Oh, look at this person who came to America just five years ago. Look at me, I've been here 20 years. I don't even have green card. This room might be here five years with green card. And they have nothing to show for it. Don't you know that? Yes. There are many people with US citizens. For 20, 30 years, they have nothing to show for. Mm -hmm. How many? You might have your green card tomorrow, and within a year, what you never dreamt of in your entire life, start up in your life. Hallelujah! Oh, I'm not married. Take it to someone. How many married people are happy? You might see them dress so well. Wear high heel shoes. And you look at, oh my God. I wish I could marry. Look at sister. Great. She's so happy. Look at her. How is that? Oh my God. If you open your mouth to tell you what is going on at home. Amen. Do I say God will help us? Amen. Shout hallelujah. For one of the reasons God put you the hedge to test you. Do you pass? For another reason, the Lord raised my spirit. If you look at the uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2 to 3. 
We'll go to our future chapter 8. The Bible says, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the dust and be 40 years. <coughs> to do what? To humble you. And to test you. In order to know what was in your heart. Whether or not you keep his command. To humble you. Oh, don't you know that? I see this one of the lessons I learned in my spiritual, my years of experiences in this country is humility. Patience comes with humility. I used to be somebody in Nigeria that whatever I wanted, I wanted it dead right away, right now. No, no, no. I had no patience. Because I saw the way God was blessing me. I didn't come to the U.S. with a uh, basket uh, because I was looking for a job. I came as a professional. While in Nigeria, after college, within three years or four years, I had three jobs lining up like this. From one job, I moved to the next. From one job, I moved to the next. To the third job, within three years. Who used to ask, how do you do? I knew nobody. A lot of grace of God. So when I came to America, I didn't come out. Just anybody, I don't know if I can just get a small job now. If I was one of the reasons I came because I said, if God could do this in Nigeria, oh, how much more is in Nigeria? Yeah. And the moment I stepped into this land, oh. hmm, my battle started. <laughs> By about 12 years of both, there was one pain of the ashes, one sorrow of the other, one affliction. <coughs> I had all the good qualifications. I couldn't get a job. I got a job one day, the next two, three months, I'm fired. I went into the business before I know it, it's all gone down. What did I not go to? Fire! The Lord remembered me. What I went through taught me humility. I say in this church, even not what I went through, maybe I would not hold the microphone. God allowed what I went through to humble me, mm-hmm. to lead me to where He wants me to be. Oh, yeah. 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 If I didn't go through that, I would not want to buy this for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But God knew that He did He called me for something greater than job, than this. And today, He humbled me through my experiences. Yeah. And thank God today, Amen. I can stand here yeah. to testify. Yeah. Yeah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. To go through what you're going to do to break that pride. The pride of I am the one that did. Mm. Don't you know when good things happen? Before you know it, if you are not careful, you start attributing it to your ability. You will say, I am so smart. Ah, I'm the first in my class. I have a PhD. Oh, I do this, I do that. Oh, when I put some deals together, it happened. You remember. No God. You don't even think that is God. The way God almost you. You got to a point in your life you know that I can never come what I am without God. God wants to thank the glory for what you are achieving in life. God wants you to know you cannot be who you are without Him. Humility. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is up. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at the book of uh, Psalm 66. Verse 8 to 12. God won't judge the hedge around you to refine you. To refine you. Some of us were so raw. We are so unpolished spiritually. Some of us, in that blessing comes, Satan will take away from you. Why? Because you are not refined. You are not prepared. Higher glory comes with higher affliction. Don't you know that? As you go higher, so are the enemies. More powerful ones start coming. But if you are not refined, 
The blessing comes. The you do not have to take away. But so God allows you to prepare you for higher glory. You look at the book of Psalm 8 12. The Bible says, For you, O oh God, best us to refine us like silver. You brought us into prison and left bottles on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and water. We went through fire and water. But you brought us the place of abundance. Oh. You brought us the place of abundance. See the travail. See the history of affliction. Pay, sorrow. Allow men to write on you. They render you useless. You become nothing before the people. You went through fire. You went through water. But God allowed all things to refine you. Amen. And eventually, what happens? Say, when you take us to a place of what? God is taking somebody right here. Yeah. To a place of abundance. Amen. Yeah. I prophesy to my life. No matter what you go through, no matter the affliction, no matter the travails, you are getting into your place of abundance. I say you are getting into your place of abundance in the name of Jesus Christ. So finally, to wrap this up, God can put your hurt. And when that happens, the spirit of Ichabod comes in. Just like Satan went in to the land of Job. God did that for a reason. The test, the humble, and to find me. And believe me, so long as the word of God is alive. Because God, the word of God is God. And God is alive. God is taking you now to a place of abundance. Yeah. Shout that in glory. Hallelujah. Let me know that it. We're going to pray for our baby.